Keen White, and I study zoology in Trinity College. And I suppose I've been fascinated with all things big and small since I was, I was a child, as most children are. But I never lost that fascination and has developed into a passion. And I suppose as most people who are passionate about the natural world one day kind of painfully realises that the, the world we hold, hold so dear is in trouble. And even though I'm not a religious man, I suppose the biblical fable of Noah's Ark is perhaps more poignant than ever. So this, this is called The Landscape of Change, and it, it's quite, it's, even though it's beautiful, it's quite a depressing picture. It shows increasing uh, sea levels, decreasing glacial mass, all correlated with increasing use of fossil fuels. And as many of you know, Leonardo DiCaprio uh, won an Oscars last week, finally. And uh, he used accept acceptance speech to drive home an important message. He said that climate change is real. That climate change is happening right now and is the most urgent threat to face our entire species. And of course, Leo was right. It is the most urgent threat to face our entire species. But in terms of the rest of the natural world, their biggest threat is myself. It is all you people here today. It is the 7.5 billion of us alive on Earth right now. It is Homo sapiens, the so aptly named wise man. And it's now an established fact that extinctions, extinction rates are a thousand times higher than they have been in the last 50 million years or so. Uh, scientists are calling for a new mass extinction event to be recognized, the Anthropocene extinction. And to put that in some context, there have been five major extinction events throughout the history of life. The last one occurring 65 million years ago, when an asteroid struck what is nowadays Mexico, sending up dust and debris into the atmosphere that blocked out the sun for years. 75% of species went extinct, including the dinosaurs. And that's what we're comparing ourselves to. I suppose you could call, we could call ourselves Noah's Flood. So what can we do about this? And what can Ireland in particular do about this? Well, like Noah, we could try and save some of these species. We could try to restore them to our landscape. We can reintroduce them. We can take them from another country, release them in the wild, create a new population to ensure the survival of that species for the future. Uh, and in the last 500 years, 67 species of plant and animal have gone extinct in Ireland. And there's even, the EU even mandates that uh, member states study the desirability to reintroduce species. So has that happened in Ireland? What's currently happening at, at, at right now? So there are currently four ongoing reintroduction programs. The Golden Eagle, top left here, was reintroduced to Donegal. It was 100 or so individuals were taken from uh, Western Scotland, reintroduced. Uh, the white-tailed seagull, the top right, has a wingspan of over 2.5 metres or so, a really massive bird. And it was reintroduced to Kerry from Norway. Uh, the red kite here on the le bottom left, uh, once again, graces the Wicklow Mountains. It was reintroduced from Wales. And uh, whether or not these reintroduction programs will be successful, well, we'll have to see, we'll have to wait and see. But perhaps the most likely to be successful is the great partridge here, which is a, a native game bird. And the Department of Agriculture gives money to farmers that uh, create habitat on their land in which this bird can breed and nest and raise its young. And because of that, it's most likely to be successful. So can, can, we, can we keep up this encouraging pace of kind of rewilding the Irish landscape? Wrong way. Uh, so one possibility would be the common quail here, bottom right. This is another kind of native game bird. Uh, it is now, ironically, largely extinct in Ireland, but it requires the same habitat as the grey partridge, uh, and so it would benefit from the Department of Agriculture scheme. Uh, so it should be, it's an obvious reintroduction candidate, and, and an immediate reintroduction should take place. Another, another possible candidate should, could be the sea surgeon here pictured on the top. This is a, a massive prehistoric fish. It can grow up to six meters long. Uh, but it's a gentle diet. You don't really have to worry. It only meets, eats clams and mussels. And if any of you ever have eaten caviar in restaurants that's sold at extortionate prices, this is where it comes from. It's the eggs of this fish. And that's one of the reasons why it is critically endangered throughout its range. And if it was reintroduced to Ireland's rivers, it could, we could re assure the survival of the species into the future. And perhaps a, a long-term conservation goal could be this crazy-looking bird here. This is a capercaillie. And they love kind of this big, open, mixed uh, Scots pine and oak forest, the kind of which we no longer see in Ireland. Perhaps if we plant that forest now, in 40 years or so, we could see the return of this species to Ireland. What about, what about the most famous or iconic species on Earth? What about the grey wolf, Canis lupus? Could we see the return of that species to Ireland? And it might surprise a few of you to know that uh, the last wolf was only shot in Ireland in 1786, and that's less than 200 years ago. Could, so could we see the return of this apex predator? Well, to put it simply, no. At the moment, 
Ireland's ecosystems are so degraded that this predator would face starvation and uh, it would also face persecution at the hands of farmers. They would shoot it to protect their livestock. Fair enough. But until Ireland's ecosystems uh, are restored, become healthy, uh, and until the public perception of the big bad wolf changes, well, a reintroduction should not be considered or even successful. But perhaps in the future when that happens, again, we could see this return of the, 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 the grey wolf. I'm going to leave you with the words of E.O. Wilson, who's a, an eminent ecologist. He said that right now we're forcing the species of the world through a bottleneck, and we've got to make it a major moral principle to get as many of them through as possible. Uh, he said it's a challenge for this century and the next. Uh, what else did he say? Uh, and he said, was one good thing about our species? That was it. We like a challenge. If we fail this challenge, Noah's Ark could be a pretty lonely place. Thank you.